this is H.C. Bailey, and welcome to a special bonus episode of Let's Play Final Fantasy XIII! Uh, first, before I start here, uh, if you haven't watched the previous episode of the upcoming boss fight, please do so now, because I'm going to be spoiling just about everything in this bonus episode, and totally ruining the entire scene. So, last chance! Okay, so today... We're going to be fighting Bartandalus, this time without the aid of using shrouds, so that'll make things a bit more interesting. Uh, the changes that I've made, mostly to my setup, it's all in the video description there, but I got the Speak of Defenders on Saz because we're going to have to cast our buffs manually now instead of using shrouds to do all the work for us there. So, and the buffs will wear off eventually, so this will help them last a bit longer, in addition to another ability that I got for him as a synergist, Boom. Because every time you uh, cast another buff on someone, it'll extend the duration of the existing buffs. So that'll be pretty nice for him. As for the uh, paradigms that I've changed here, yeah, I've got totally different paradigms here. We're going to need a synergist, obviously, to uh, get the buffs on everyone, but we're also going to need a medic, because just the doctor's code and the uh, potions there is not going to be enough there. So having a medic is an absolute must now. So, okay, there we go. But I still like using the same party because we need haste and we need the debuffs. So that kind of limits our, uh, our options here. Now I've turned down the game volume for this episode as opposed to the last one. So if you really want to hear all the epic music and everything, well, watch the other episode. I mean, I'll still have the game volume a little bit up here, but I want to make sure that you can hear absolutely everything that I'm saying because, well, I'm going to be talking a whole lot more in this one than I did in the other one. So, there we go! Let's take her down! I like how everyone on the side is just, like, operating computers and not bothering with anything or paying attention to us, getting ready to destroy the world. And I heard the owl's name is Minerva or Menvra or however they spell it. It has a weird spelling in this game. It's not like Minerva. Human. So, no I don't know. Here. What? Humans like you! <laughs> what? <Good> magic? <laughs> you know, they should have had a boss fight here with her, you know? Like, with General Viper and Colonel Cross. Like, have us fight her, like, bring her to her knees, and then have her Dysley kill her off, you know? I mean, how much screen time did she have? Like, 10 minutes tops? You know, they didn't really develop Rosh and her that that much in the actual story beyond even beyond the data even with the dialogue they didn't really put that much to them. A factory for the mass production of human thralls. So the Falsier Lavo spawn, that's great. What can And I love how snow just bounces off that barrier. <laughs> I just get a kick out of that every time. You saw the and I like how well the voices are lip-synced in this episode. I mean, it's still not 100% perfect, of course, because it's animation, but still, you know, I mean, it's nice to, th to see that they really put in the effort in the game, and especially this scene. <laughs> oh, child, perish the thought. Yeah, let's see our human. I am more than that. I use an owl to become a giant freaking robot. I am fancy. So... This is the big reveal of the game. As it turns out, the Pope is just a giant robot. Nice analogy, game! You want to take any more shots at Catholicism while you're at it? Oh, I'm teasing. But I like how they actually look scared here. That's awesome. How they did that with the facial expressions. And even Saz, who doesn't quite look as scared as the others, you know? They're kind of a little staggered there. Place. You must learn your place for boss time! Alright, now this is going to be a little different, because now I've got Saz as a synergist. So what I want to do, start with a Libra scope, and pretty much start out the same attack sequence, but don't worry about like how much damage you're dealing, or actually chaining uh, him. For right now, we just want to wait for Saz to get all the buffs on everyone. Now you see Saz got and Frost on Lightning there. That's because with all of these four heads here, uh, they all have their own elemental weakness. We gotta take out the four heads before actually going after Bartandalus himself there. So basically, just wait around 
for Shaz to uh, get the buffs on everyone. And I'm pretty much using a potion every round because I can't uh, switch to Medic right now while Shaz is buffing everyone out. So basically once he gets five buffs on everyone, then we'll be able to uh, go all out. Now once you kill the first one, go after the second one so Saz can get and water on lightning there. So that way I can deal more elemental damage there. He'll probably get another buff on himself there, if we can. There we go. One more round, and then we'll switch to Comrade Rav. Now since I've got the, the elemental buff on lightning there, I'm not even going to bother with uh, Triple Ravager to stagger these guys, because I can kill them fast enough without having to worry about that. Now let's switch back to Tom Sinrav, so that way Taz can get um, and fire on lightning there. There we go. And then just go all out with Comrade Rav. So far we're doing pretty good. I may need to switch to a medic eventually, but for right now we're doing pretty good. Eventually we will, because it's his magic will just become too powerful in the last form there. Okay, switch to Tom Sinrav now, so that way I can get, uh, what's the last one weak to? Lightning? Yeah. So that way, uh, Saz can get in Thunder on me. Switch to Comrade Med, because now his magic is going to get really powerful. As you take out each one of those heads, he's going to, uh, use some magic amplification thing, whatever, and that will... Uh, well, yeah, even with a Doctor's Code, I wouldn't be able to keep up with it, but just Comrade Med, we should be in pretty good shape. If he gets our HP down into the red, then I would start considering using a potion, like now. Yeah, because you see the, uh, the Neil got knocked down there, so she wouldn't be able to uh, heal up from that. Okay, there we go. Now we want to switch to Rav Rav Sab, and I like alternating elemental strikes. Now, he does have a bit of resistance to swords. No, the debuffs. So, it may take a little while to get the debuffs on him, but don't worry about however long it takes. I don't think I need to switch to medic right now, but perhaps eventually. So far, so good. Oh, we got two of the debuffs on him. All right. Yeah, it's taking a little longer than I would like to get the debuffs on him, but we're doing okay. And eventually our buffs will wear off, so come on, get the shell on him. There we go. Um, yeah, let's go to try disaster. Why not? Once you've got him staggered, you still want to stay in Ravagers to boost the chain bonus a bit more. Okay, that's enough. Switch to uh, Comrade Med. And then go all out. Do whatever you can. Okay, we almost got him. Not, uh, potion, potion, potion. Ow. I think that laser attack there is um, lightning, or not lightning, or a physical attack. Nuts! Okay, now you see what he's doing there? He's charging up for a big attack, Strudo. So what I want to do is go all out. You see how he went like, Ugh! like that? That means you weakened the attack from the Strudo. You don't want to switch to Sentinel while he's charging up for that. Okay, well I killed him before he shot off his lasers there. But essentially, if he uses those lasers, and you didn't weaken it by attacking him, by going all out, he will kill you with that attack. So, yeah, he kind of tricks you into thinking, oh, well, he's charging up. I better, you know, switch to Sentinel for a really big attack. But no, you're supposed to go all out to weaken the attack. So that's how that works. And uh, so there we go. And for defeating him, we get the Entite Ring. That is part of my plan for that Uranonite. But we still need one more item to complete the trifecta. So, uh... You know, save the Entite Ring for later. I think it can be sold for like 60,000 gil, but uh, do not sell. Save it for later. I'm not going to use it to actually equip it, but, well, you'll see. All right, got him. The foul sea running the sanctum. Then wasn't that already established? Yes, it wasn't Eden controlling things after all. As I, said, I mean, they're acting like they're all surprised that a foul sea is, you know, in charge of everything here. Guess I don't know. As easy as the rest of I mean, maybe we're surprised that Dysley is a Falci, but issue. I don't know. Not fought to win. You should know quite well. Maybe, maybe that's just me. Sure way of dispatching our kind. Yeah, that's why we used it on you. No not. 
Okay, so how do we use Ragnarok? What's Ragnarok? Ah! Forgotten your focus. You know, I don't think they ever Ragnarok directly the explain what how she lost her memory. Must I mean, in order it has to something to do with to her tattoo and her focus and everything you like that. We can kind of figure that out. One but, you, you know, they never say, because of that, therefore this. You know? They just say, oh, she lost her memory. And uh, you guys get to deal with it. The Why do you need to teleport like that? We can see you just All fine there. All fuels Eden with strength, and Eden in turn sustains you and the rest of our kind. Destroy Orphan, and Orphan's you'll release a, dumb a force name. such as this world You won't has think so, seen. but it is. Cocoon will be torn asunder. <laughs> so, so destroy the world destroy and Orphan. die, or don't destroy the world and become a zombie. You're not giving us very good options here, Dysley. And I like that name, Dysley, too. That's pretty cool. Aunt Dysley, Bartandalus, yeah. Kind of reminds me of the whole, uh... Uh, what is it? The thing in Final Fantasy Tactics with all those, uh... Zodiac monster things, whatever they were. It's been years since I played that game. Whatever they were called. The moment you arrived, your friend wept crystal tears. This yes, thank you for reminding me. This required that you be brought together. That girl Maybe they need six of us to, to uh, summon Ragnarok. Cocoon's destruction. Did it never well, you don't have that much faith in your girl? Or did you simply refuse to countenance the thought? I had to look that word up, countenance. You will not face the uh, from what I looked up, it means to extend approval plight. or tolerance. Someone was saying it also means to, uh, uh, what is, I forget what someone else was saying. But, uh, but the definition that I found, I don't think that works here. I mean, I think they meant, did you not already consider the thought? But countenance would mean that Snow had already considered it and then needed to approve of it or tolerate it. That's what countenance means. So, but he never even thought of it before. So I think they're just trying to use big words to make the scene, to make it seem more epic than it actually is. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. This is bad. Some people were saying it actually does. I mean, I could see how it works there, but I don't think it's the most accurate word. I think they could have just said, did you not consider the thought? But yeah, like I was saying the first time, I don't think they ever explain how Rosh survived. He's just suddenly back, all of a sudden. Heck, by that, at that rate, you could say that uh, Nevada is still alive. No, no, she's, she is dead. <laughs> she's going to, if not, she's going to be experiencing a very, well, a lot of turbulence soon enough. What kind of ship is this? Fighting on its own? Well, it's a pretty nice ship. Well, it's, it was the owl. I wish I had an owl that could become an airplane. Clever, aren't you? But I don't. I like owls. Instead, the owls I meet just give me freaking guardian acorns! Nah. Nah. It's a pretty talented owl there. Why would he give us a ship, though, yeah, and then something? send someone after Got us me. to capture us? I give up. Well, I know why, but I'm not going to tell you. By the way, I don't know if they ever explained it, but we're... That's Eden, where we are now. I'm guessing there's a shield around Eden or something. And somehow the owl is able to get around the shield. But yeah, that's Eden, because we were right next to... Or we were at the Palamecia, and I guess they were right at Eden there. Oh no! Another plane! Well, there we go. Is someone looking forward while they're driving? <laughs> Ludicrous speed! Go! What happened to them? That didn't work out so well. 
And they died. No, nah, no, nah, of course we didn't die. We're, we're still going to be moving on here. So I hope you've enjoyed this bonus episode of Let's Play Final Fantasy XIII. And showing some different strategies for the boss fight, different commentary. I don't do it all the time, but, you know, I figured for one of my favorite scenes in the whole game, I think it was worth it here. This is H.C. Bailey, signing off. Have a good day.